So let's look into applying the idea of separation of variables to the heat equation. So let's look at a temperature of a 1D bar. So we'll consider the 1D heat equation. So the heat equation is du dt, where u is the temperature, is equal to alpha times the second der partial derivative of u with respect to x. And we add to that some boundary conditions. And our boundary conditions here are going to be that the ends of the bar are held at zero temperature, so that at x equal to zero and x equal to L, the temperature is equal to zero. So the question here is, what is the general solution to this differential equation and boundary condition? And to figure that out, we're going to use the technique of separation of variables. So there's a couple steps. Step one is we're going to first assume that u of x and t can be written as x of x, t of t. It's kind of our separation ansatz. Then we're going to plug this into our differential equation and see what we get. Okay, so when we plug this in, we get on the left hand side x dt dt is equal to alpha times the second derivative of big X with respect to little x squared times t. It's a little bit more useful to write this as x t dot is equal to alpha x double prime times t, where I'm going to put dots as time derivatives and primes as space derivatives so that x double prime is the second derivative of x with respect to little x squared. Then we divide this equation that we now have by the combination of x times t. So that gives us t dot over t is equal to alpha x double prime over x. At this point, we're ready now to separate the ordinary differential equations. So we write this as two separate ordinary differential equations, namely x double prime over x is some lambda which then tells us that t dot over t must be equal to alpha times that same lambda. It's a little bit more useful to write this in standard form, so it's x double prime is equal to lambda x, and t dot is equal to alpha lambda t. Okay, so now we have ordinary differential equations, so we can solve these ODEs, um, and then use our boundary conditions to figure out what our solutions are. There's a bit of a problem, though, in that the solutions are going to depend on what lambda is. In particular, if lambda is 0, greater than 0, or less than 0. And we don't really know yet which one that is. In order to figure that out, we're going to have to go through each case. And for each case, we're going to have to see if that the solution we get is consistent with our boundary conditions. And what we're going to find is that some are not, and one set, one assumption is. So let's just talk about our boundary conditions. We said u at 0 t is equal to 0, so that's x at 0 times t of t. Well, that really just means that x at 0 is equal to 0, because t of t can't be 0 for all time. The same thing for the boundary condition at x equal to l. That tells us that x at l must be equal to 0. So those are the boundary conditions that we really want to imply, impose on the x direction. OK. So now, considering these boundary conditions for x of x, let's look at different choices for lambda. So let's look at lambda equal to 0. For lambda equal to 0, we look at our differential equation above here. So we have x double prime is equal to 0. So that's straightforward enough. x is just ax plus b. Using our boundary conditions, at 0, we get b, but that must be 0. So x of x, it must be a of x, or a times x. At x equal to l, that means that a times l must be 0, which apparently means a is 0. And I guess that means x as a function of x is 0. Uh, no, that's not going to work. Um, so we need to choose a different lambda. So let's choose lambda greater than 0. Let's call it k squared, so that it's always greater than 0. Solving the differential equation gives us x of x is a e to the kx plus b e to the minus kx. And you can just check that, that this works. At x equal to 0, that says that a plus b must be equal to 0, so a is equal to minus b. Or we could write that as uh, x of x is a e to the kx minus e to the minus kx. At x equal to l, well, now we have a e to the kl 
minus e to the minus kl, and apparently that must be zero, which says a has to be zero. But then x it is completely zero, and so that's not going to work. So both of those were fails. Let's try lambda less than zero. So call lambda minus k squared, so that's definitely less than zero. So the solution to the differential equation here is now going to be a cosine of kx plus b sine of kx. OK, let's look at our boundary conditions. At x equal to 0, we get a, which must be 0. So that tells us that x of x is really just b sine of kx. At x equal to l, that tells us that b sine of kl must be equal to 0. And we don't have to say b is 0 here. Now we can say that uh, this would work if the sine of kl was 0 or if kl was equal to n pi. Or I could say k is n pi over l, where n is some integer. So that would work. That would solve this boundary condition and still leave x of x not uh, identically equal to 0. So we found it. We now know that x of x is b sine of n pi over l x, where we let k be n pi over l. This satisfies the boundary conditions for our differential equation. OK, so we've got half of our solution to the differential equation of the heat equation. In particular, u was x of x times t of t. We now have x of x. We need the other half. We need t of t. So let's look at the differential equation again. So differential equation was t dot is alpha lambda t. And now we know that lambda is minus k squared, and we know what k is. So we're pretty much there. So now we have t dot is minus k squared alpha t of t. The solution to this, well, that's a first order ordinary differential equation. The solution's straightforward to get. It's c e to the minus k squared alpha t, where k is n pi over l. So let's write that as c e to the minus alpha n squared pi squared over l squared t. So this is t of t. Well, that was a lot easier than finding x. So now we can combine these two and get the full general solution. So u of x and t, the temperature of the bar, which is x of x times t of t, is b sine of n pi over l x times another constant c e to the minus alpha n squared pi squared over l squared t. We can combine the b and c into some new arbitrary constant. And even more importantly, this differential equation is true for any n. And so we can make it true, and it happens to be true, for a sum of many different n values. In particular, you could sum over all n values. So the general solution is u of x of t is the infinite sum, n from 1 to infinity, of some constant b sub n sine of n pi x over l, e to the minus alpha n squared pi squared over l squared t. And so this is true for many different n's. Uh, and so now that we have found the general solution to the 1D heat equation, including the boundary conditions that the temperature is 0 at the ends, but we still need to figure out what the b sub n's are if we really want an actual solution. And so in the next video, we'll impose some boundary conditions, sorry, some uh, initial conditions and figure out what the b sub n's are.